It was an invasion of my mind by a transcendently rational mind. It invaded my mind and assumed control of my motor centers and did my acting and thinking for me. But you had your own consciousness there as well. Yeah, but I was a spectator to it. Oh. I took the Minnesota multiphasic once, and was that a, a psychological profile test, mm -hmm. and I tested out as paranoid, cyclothymic, neurotic, uh, schizophrenic, and not only that, I tested out high on the K scale, which is the scale for lying. <laughs> I tested out as an, inc an incorrigible liar. And the person who was giving me the test was a friend of mine who was doing it for the Army as, a, as his career in the Army. And I was so high on some of the skills that I, the, the dot was up in the instructions part. <laughs> I couldn't even find the dot. And then he got to the K scale and he said, you're a malingerer. I says, you know, I says, I'm 4F. I, I, I don't have to malinger. I mean, I've got high blood pressure. I'm not, you're not, you're not in, a, you're, at this moment, you are not in a position of examining an inductee. So why would I malinger? Well, the case scale is consistency. They'll say, uh, I'll give you the question phrase several different ways. And they'd ask, um, answer yes, maybe, or no. Um, I think there is a divine deity that rules the world. And I'd say, yeah, there probably is. And then later on they'd say, um, I don't think there is a divine deity that rules the world. And I'd say, that's probably correct. <laughs> I can see a lot of reasons for believing that. So I'd mark yes, there is no divine deity. And then later they'd say, I'm not sure if there's a divine deity that rules the world. I'd say, yeah, that's about right. Uh, and, and now, uh, in every case I was sincere. Now, he couldn't believe that I was sincere. I used to kind of talk like I, I, I was really into acid, but the, the fact of the matter is I took acid two times. <laughs> <laughs> and the second time it was so weak a dose that it was uh, that I've smoked hash was stronger. I'm not, it may not even have been acid. <laughs> I only know of one time where I really took acid, that was Sandoz acid, and that was a giant horse capsule that I got from the University of California. Mm -hmm. And a friend and I split it. And I don't know, there must have been a whole milligram of it there. It was a gigantic thing, you know. We, we bought it for five dollars and took it home. And we looked at it for a while, we looked at it for a while, and we split it up. And took that, and it was just, it was the greatest thing, I'll tell you. It was, I went straight to hell, it was what happened. I found myself, <laughs> you know, the landscape froze over, and there were huge boulders, and there was a deep thumping, and it was, it was the day of wrath, and God was judging me as, as, a, as, a, as a sinner, and... <clears throat> This lasted for thousands of years, and it didn't get any better. <laughs> it just got worse and worse. And I was in terrible pain. I felt terrible physical pain, and I, all I could talk was in Latin. It was the most embarrassing, because the girl I was with thought I was doing it to annoy her. And I kept saying, Libera me domine in die illa. And Agnes de Quito's Pecata Mundi and their barma, a little German throwing their barma mix, my God. And especially uh, Trump, Tremens Factus Sum Ego et Timeo et Timeo, I mean, I'm afraid. And I, you know, it's a Liberame Domine, and whining, whining like some poor dog that's been left out in the rain all night. And finally, just the girl with me said, Oh, barf and walked out of the room in disgust. And it, 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 was a, it was a little bit like when I rolled my VW. I mean, it was all very messy and, and, and strange. And the only good part of it was when I looked in the refrigerator um, 
And I had not defrosted the refrigerator for a long time, and there was nothing in the freezer compartment. I looked in, I saw this giant cavern of selectites and stalagmites. And I thought it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I had finally become half crazed with horror and grief at the, at the state of the world. I was looking for some enlightenment. So, in 74, there came upon me at the trough of my life, at the point where I saw nothing but inexplicable suffering, there came to me the beatific vision, which calmed all my sense of horror at the world and my sense of the transcendent power of evil. And on the basis of this vision, we're speaking now of a time slightly over five years ago, just a bit over five years ago, I set out to write a book in which this was expressed in a, in a way that made rational sense rather than simply mystical sense that my mystical experience with the beatific vision had to be formulated in some rational structure that could be transferred to other people. What did this amount to philosophically? Um, my mental anguish was simply removed from me, you know, as if by a divine fiat, you know, that this, God... This just happened to you on your own? Yes. No one else in Yes, it just happened to me on my own. Um, it was as if the primordial curse or fall had lifted from me, you know, and that I was restored, healed. It was a sort of, you know, uh, intervention of a kind of a psychological mystical type, which I describe in Vallis, my new book. How, how, what is the title? Valis, V-A-L-I-S, it stands for Vast Active Living Intelligence System. Mm -hmm. What happened was that some transcendent divine power, which was not evil but was benign, intervened to restore my mind, to heal, heal my mind and heal my body and give me a sense of the beauty of the world, the joy of the world, the the sanity of the world. That the primordial creator deity, the way I, the way I express it, Vals, is the primordial creator deity was essentially deranged from our standpoint. That we are as humans a an evolution above the primordial deity. My outlook is based on, not on faith, but on an actual, that, the actual encounter that I had in 74 with a mysterious, powerful, rational mind, which was unfathomable to me as to what it was, to what it called itself. It seemed to resemble Ubik to, in many respects, Ubik the entity that I had written about in the novel by the title. When you say an encounter, was, was this um, a, a hallucination or a vision or something? It was an invasion of my mind mm. by a transcendently rational mind. It was almost as if I had been insane all my life, and suddenly I had become sane. Now, I've actually thought of that as, as a possibility, that I, that I actually have been psychotic until 1974, from 1928 when I was born until, 19, until March of 1974. But I don't think that's the case. I mean, I may have been somewhat whacked out, you know, and somewhat eccentric for years and years and years. But I wasn't all that crazy, because I'd been given Rorschach tests and so on. This was a rational mind that was not a human rational mind. It was, it was more like an artificial intelligence. 
Now, I don't pretend to know what it was. On Thursdays and Saturdays, I think it was God. On Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I think that it was extraterrestrials. Sometimes I think it's th with the Soviet Union, the Academy of Sciences was trying out their, their psych psychotronic microwave telepathic trans. I thought about that. I tried different theories, you know. Yeah. I, mean, I, I tried every theory. I thought of the Rosicrucians. I thought of the Russians. <laughs> I thought of extraterrestrials. I thought of God. I thought of Christ. Was it something you heard then, or, or was it more than that? Kind of well, it 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 <laughs> experience. Uh, it um, it invaded my mind and assumed control of my motor centers and did my acting and thinking for me. But you had your own consciousness there as well. Yeah, but I was a spectator to it. Oh. 